This video continues from the last video called Constructors. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at this class that you created in the previous video called Person. And it's a very generic class, meaning it could cover a wide variety of types of people. And we're going to go and make it more specific. And this is a process called inheritance. And inheritance means you can actually get something from a class above you, from a parent class. For instance, think about maybe a mom or a father that you have. Um, do you look more like um, your mom? Do you look more like your dad, your, your birth parent? Uh, is it maybe your face, your hair color, your eyes, the way you act, mannerisms? And if so, that is because you have inherited that attribute from that parent class. Now, we're talking about single inheritance. In other languages, you can have what they call multiple inheritance. In JavaScript, we work with single inheritance, meaning you have one parent. And so what it allows us to do is to take a class that already works. And let's say here's this person class. That person class already has a first name, a last name, and a state abbreviation. And we want to make another class based upon this class. And that new class, we want it to have everything that this class has. And then we go and make it more specific. Something that says, okay, it's more than a person now. It's a special type of person. So how would we do that? I'm going to go ahead and minimize that class. And then we'll come right to here. And we're going to create another class. And we're going to call it the student class. I'm going to spell it correctly, student. And we're going to say that that student class is going to be based upon the person class. So this student class now gets everything that the person class has to offer, meaning it already has now a first name, a last name, and a state abbreviation, a person constructor, a method to get the full name, the first letter, the, the be able to set the first name or the full name, getting the first name, getting the last name, setting the first name, setting the last name. The student class, since it extends the person class, now gets everything that the person class wants to give it, meaning everything that's public. I could now come into here and say, okay, well, what makes a student more specific than a person? Well, not every person goes to school. So a student could have a GPA. What else could they have? They could have maybe what class they are, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. They could have a class schedule. They could have all these things, all these other attributes that just a normal person doesn't have. And that doesn't mean that students are abnormal, although some teachers like to joke and say they are. But what I mean by that is the person is a very generic class, meaning it doesn't have a whole lot of things, but it could represent a wide variety. When you begin to subclass through the keywords extends, that says you're taking this generic class and making it more specific. And we made it more specific by adding another attribute. What else could we add in there? Let's write its own constructor. Now, in this constructor, remember that we're going to call or we're inherited from the person class. And if you remember, the person constructor needed a first name and last name. So we're going to go ahead and say we're going to use three, three parameters. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to use the same name as the attributes. I'll just say s first, s last, and uh, dgpa. And remember, I use Hungarian notation. You don't have to. That's just what I do. And so now that we're in here, the very first thing you want to do is make sure that everything happens in the parent class. And so you want to call the parent class. And the way you call the parent class is by saying the word super. And then you want to pass anything the parent might need. If we just did this, that says call the parent constructor, which is the person constructor right here. 
but don't pass it anything. So that would be null and that would be null. Now we could do that. But we could also say pass s first and pass s last. This means that when you call the student constructor, you'll receive these three parameters. We will then pass on the first parameter to here, the person constructor. And we'll pass the second parameter to the person constructor, which would then also initialize state abbreviation. And then it would come back to the student constructor and say, do whatever else you want to do. We want to say this.gpa equal to dgpa. And this would now assign the third parameter to this constructor. So this is how you can call a parent constructor through the keyword super. And then how you could go ahead and modify any other attributes that you might want to modify in the student constructor. Well, what else could we do? Let's write a method called get GPA. And the get GPA simply says return this dot GPA. And that returns the student GPA. We could do a set GPA, D input, this dot GPA, I'm sorry, this dot GPA is equal to the input. So we could do anything we want in this class, just like we did in the person class, write our own methods. But remember that we're working with data in the student class. Could we have done anything with first name? Could we have said first name, uh, this dot first name? Oh, it looks like it because it's accessible there. Why is that? Because this class inherits from person, and so it gets all the information. Could you call uh, a method in from the person class, like get full name or get first letter? This dot get full name, and it looks like it's there. And why is that? because you inherited from the person class. So you get everything. So now that we have a student class that inherits from person, we come down here to our little program. And instead of saying call the person class, we'll say call the student class. Pass Mickey and Mouse. Let's pass it a GPA. And we're going to say parse float. Uh, actually, we don't need to do that. We'll just pass it. A number. We'll say 3.0 parenthesis. And so let's now go and run this and see what happens in the debugger. We'll start it. Control Shift I to grab the debugger. Let's go look at our source code. And I want to drop a breakpoint right on line 81. So let's run it. Click me. Here's line 81. Let's see where we go. Step. So we go to the student constructor. Mickey goes into first. Mouse goes into last. Three goes into GPA. Step. Notice now it jumps up to the person class. And it goes to the person constructor. Mickey goes to first. Mouse goes to last. We finish the person constructor. And then we come back down to the student constructor where we go ahead and fill in the attribute for GPA. And then it runs mouse and Mickey and M. So this makes you feel like you're, you're working with a person object when in fact you're really working with a student object. So the great thing about inheritance is that if you find a class that's already written, it works, it's close to what you want to do, but doesn't do everything you want it to do, then all you have to now do in your program is create another class, inherit from that other class, and then go make whatever changes you want. Make sure you call the parent when needed, and then create an object from that new class.
not the, not the parent class, but the child class. And then you get all the benefits of somebody else's class and you just go make the little changes you need to make.